Okay, so I guess I'm audible to everyone. Yes or no, beta? Just let me know, though. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, just hold yes, sir. Okay, so I think I can proceed right now. All right. So before the first class, uh, I would request everyone, uh, please turn on your video. Please turn on your video. Okay, all right. Let me find your faces. Okay, I can see here, uh, Srinjan, Rithik uh, Pathak. Please turn on your video because our introductory session will be very short because you know, throughout the year, we have to cover entire syllabus, end to end. All right, please turn on your video. Everyone, do turn on your video. Everyone, please turn on your video. Srinjan Das, turn on your video. Shoru Mitra Malakar, Devjani Ghosh, Ankita, Boishali, Shorkar. Okay, Abir Chakraborty, Sridhatri, turn on your video. Shomorji Jana, Sridhatri, turn on your video, better please. Shumaya, Sridev. Onirban Dhara, Tadin, turn on your video. Show me, turn on your video. And Arya Ghosh, please turn on your video. So in this class, uh, the topic, uh, today's topic will be the first topic. Hello? Sir, I am video on the current speaking. I am going to see you in the current speaking. Okay, all right. All right, so for you today, we can, can uh, this is actually something today. For today only, you can turn off. Otherwise, you have to turn on. All right. So the first uh, uh, topic uh, is human reproductions. Okay, because this is the very first topic, you know, and it's a very basic topic. And most of us, uh, we are also keen on reading this chapter because it's a very fundamental chapter. And I want to tell you, the human reproduction is such a chapter when where you cannot afford to mistake anything. Okay, anything. Everything should be absolutely correct from human reproduction because the questions will be very easy and very fundamental question. So, all right, uh, by this time, let, I want to tell you this uh, entire discussion uh, will be based on more. I will, I will try to finish this discussion within five, uh, five classes because this is actually really a big chapter. And uh, if you talk about uh, the subtopic of here, so then I will say the subtopics are male reproductive system, female reproductive system, gamete formation, that is you already know gametogenesis. Menstrual cycle is a big heading, which we have to cover definitely because many questions are there from menstrual cycle because you, do, if you don't know menstrual cycle, then it will be very difficult to answer question on reproductive health as well. So menstrual cycle is obviously very important uh, from MCQ point of view. Then the, then the concept of pregnancy, concept of implantation, concept of fertilizations and its relevant MCQ. Those are also very, very important. And we have few stages of development of pregnancy as well that you already know up to the blastula stage that NCRT has clearly mentioned. Because gastrula is something which is really dealt with something, the organ development, uh, which is not included in our NCRT syllabus. And I want to tell you human reproduction is a really a big chapter. It's a, it's a really a big chapter. So there is no ending of this chapter actually, but we will be remaining inside the bracket of NCRT syllabus. All right. So this is very important and that you have to know. Uh, so first uh, I want to tell you this discussion is based on, and then finally we have to, we'll also cover something called parturation. So, First, what is what are, is called sexual reproduction? Okay, so first you have to know the basic theme that's called sexual reproduction. 
so sexual reproduction is something when you will find that both gametes like this is a female gamete all right and this is a male gamete so if you find two gametes not one and they are fusing together to form a single cell that you eventually you know that is called zygote okay this mode of reproduction will be sexual reproduction again i am repeating if you find two nucleuses they are fusing together and forming a new one definitely you know from basic concept mostly generally haploid haploid fuses to form diploid and the, it forms zygote and this process is called syngamy so you already know syn means fusion gamy means marriage okay so sexual reproduction you can say syngamy and you can say zygote formation is the basic criteria of any sexual reproduction if you don't need two gametes to form zygote then it's not a sexual reproduction eventually that will be a sexual reproduction for plants that would be known as vegetative reproduction all right so this is a very fundamental concept don't make any mistake in it okay the next question uh sexual reproduction is performed by whom okay sexual reproduction is performed by animals performed by plants performed by human being as well today's topic is confined with discussion of human sexual reproduction okay so first i want to tell you the human sexual reproduction it is dealing with two types two types of human sexual reproduction one for male everyone this is the rule of the class you have to keep your video turned on throughout the class and female okay so male sexual reproduction and female sexual reproduction so we will first concentrate on male sexual reproductive organs then you have to know when i am saying male sexual reproductive organs there are two not one i mean two types one is a primary category and is a secondary category so what are called primary sexual organs or primary reproductive organ straight away answer if the organ is capable of gametogenesis so if this is the factory of the gamete for this person that will be known as primary reproductive organ so gamete formation should be there from that organ so definitely if i say male it would be the testis which is the primary reproductive organ or you can say primary sexual organ if i say the secondary sexual organ anything which is relevant with the reproductive system apart from testis okay now i want to tell you testis t e s t i s is the singular form and if you say t e s t e s that's the plural form all right now the sec uh, secondary sexual reproductive organ if you have cl clear idea i will also show you the picture then it will be very much clear to you secondary sexual reproductive organ if i say then it comprises of epididymis it comprises of vas deferens it comprises of your seminal vesicle okay and other organ as well that i'll mention shortly now i'll show you the picture of male reproductive organ this is very fundamental and this question can be asked in the neat exam as well what how they will ask this question to you they will pick up this question uh, diagram in a black and white fashion and they will put x and y and z marking they will say you we have already marked x y z which of the following options they just hold on just hold so all right so by this time you have to understand that this uh, there, there are different organs you can see clearly okay i am i am i'm taking this cursor follow my cursor uh here this is something 
this is a big organ. Uh, is it visible? I think this cursor is visible. Okay, all right. So you can see, you can see this cursor is going to something which is a like a like a balloon like structure. Yes, this is a balloon filled with water, urine. So that's his, that is your urinary bladder. But before the urinary bladder, you can see a bony protection which will keep your bladder protected. Okay, and this is the bones which is a part of hip bone. Uh, can you tell me? Can you can you tell me? Uh, our hip bone consists of three part. I think you know. Okay. Today I don't. I, I will also show you in the chapter. So our hip bone is like this. Our hip bone is like this. Okay. Our hip bone is like this. Uh, like ilium, ischium, and pubis. There are three parts in our hip bone. Okay. Again, I am saying. Our uh, these are the two hip bones. They will they will uh, fuse. They will meet anteriorly and posteriorly. If you say. The, there will be a sacrum bone. Okay, so you can, everyone, we can feel. Uh, just put your hands on your region on the belt. You can see on the either side there is some strong bone. You can see on the either side that's your ilium. That's your ilium. You can see. Okay, on that's your ilium. On the left side that's your ilium. All right, in the back, in the back, just at the midline at the back. Okay, at the back. Okay, near the buttock, you can you can feel a bone which is strong that is called sacrum. Okay, so behind you have sacrum, laterally you have ilium. Okay, all right. So and if you if I move forward, if I move forward, if I move forward, the bone that you can feel at the lower point of the abdomen, at the lower point of the try to trace in this way, go below, feel your abdomen, feel your abdomen, go below. There is a point of bone. You can see, you can where actually the boclus of the belt. You have seen another boclus of the belt. Boclus of the belt is uh, is residing on that point. That's actually known as symphysis pubis. It's a very important thing. Symphysis pubis. Why it's symphysis? Because here the two hip bone meets. Here the two hip bone meet together. That's why this is called symphysis pubis. And this is the symphysis pubis, which is protecting. This is the symphysis pubis. This is the symphysis pubis, which is protecting your bladder. All right. This is very, very important. Very, very important. Because you don't know, yeah, though it's not pointed in the NCRT book, but I think you should know it. And that's why I'm pointing it. And I request you to remember this thing. Because though in this chapter, this diagram is not marked. But in the chapter of locomotion and movement, even in the NCRT, the same diagram is marked. So this is important. So this is the symphysis pubis. Okay, this is the bone, and that bone is symphysis pubis. Clear, everyone? Symphysis pubis, uh, or you can say simply pubis. Clear. Now, behind it, you can see urinary bladder, which is clearly marked in your book as well. Here, urine is there. The next thing that you have to understand today, the next thing that you have to understand today, you can uh, clearly see this is something is called ureta. I mean, a pipeline which is meeting the bladder. There's a pipeline which is coming from the kidney above. Okay. And that pipeline is meeting the bladder. Okay. Can you, can you find, can you follow it? Okay. This is the meeting the bladder. Okay. This is your ureter. This is your ureter. This is not at all related with your reproductive system. Uh, this is, yeah, this is somehow maybe related for the frog. It may be related with the reproductive system, but not for us at all. And it's ureter, which will carry urine from the kidney to the bladder. But you might be confused at a point that some search, there is a structure I can see clearly crossing this. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. Can you, can you see something is crossing? Something is crossing the ureter, which is carrying the urine. Can you, can you find it? I'm marking in yellow. Have you found? Have you yes, found sir. that? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes, all right. Yeah. All right. So this is something. Just trace the structure. Trace the structure. It will go down. It will leave the abdominal compartment, and finally, it will be meeting to a structure which is present in the scrotum. Okay, and that's why this is the scro This is the testis. You already know which is residing in the scrotum which is a, what is scrotum? Scrotum is a skin pouch outside the male body. It's a skin pouch outside the male body where testes reside. Okay, so this is the testes. And finally, this structure is meeting the 
uh, the test is okay and this is something is called vas difference this pointing is also important this structure is called vas difference so if anyone is asking at the point of the bladder which two structures are meeting together what will be the answer okay i, I mean what which two structure are crossing so you just draw uh, in this way in your notebook that this is if this is if this is the if this is the vd that is the vas difference do remember from something will come above which is called ureter okay this question might be asked in your neat exam okay okay so this is a concept that that's why we should segregate it from the uh, our book okay all right the next question uh, and the next topic and next concept that you have to understand there is a beautiful gland which is a like a pear shaped gland you can find below the bladder below the bladder again i am putting my cursor okay i am making it yellow okay this is the structure okay you can find a structure which is below the bladder you can find them which is a and, and, and this is like this this part is another part and this is another part okay what is the name of this gland what is the name of this gland this is a fibromon vascular muscular gland what is what is it can you tell me prostate can you tell me? yeah absolutely correct answer this is prostate absolutely correct answer this is uh, this is prostate all right so if i say this is a uh, prostate okay absolutely correct <clears throat> this is prostate okay so this is below the bladder you have to understand this is below the bladder okay the next question below the prostate below the prostate and or you can say at the starting of the penis okay below the pros prostate and at the starting of the penis okay let me use the cursor again this is a cursor this is the starting of the penis okay at the starting of the penis at the starting of the penis you can say this is a this is called bulb of the penis this is actually called bulb of the penis okay is called bulb of the penis because from here the penis is starting at this bulb of the penis near the bulb of the penis below the bladder there is a small p shaped gland small p shaped gland and that gland can you tell me below the prostate near the bulb of the penis there is a gland can you tell me the name of the gland upper gland upper gland yeah both are absolutely correct you can say upper gland uh which was named up named after the scientist cowper and you can also say bulbo urethral gland why this is called bulbo urethral gland that you have to understand it's called bulbo urethral gland because it is present near the bulb of the penis that's why it's called bulbo urethral gland all right uh, so uh, definitely you can also remember that this is something called cowper's gland cowper's gland both are correct okay both are correct and please do remember this name of cowper's gland or bulbo urethral gland okay so the straight away we are coming to the next question uh, sir uh, then uh, we can understand it's called bulbo by why it's urethra as well you can clearly see that in between this gland your urethra is passing this is your urethra now what is urethra i think you have the idea what is urethra still i am marking here the urethra is a structure which will start at the neck of the bladder this is the neck of the bladder from where the urethra blue color urethra you can see it is starting from the neck of the bladder you can see urethra is getting started and it will run downward okay it is going downward 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 for the male they have penis so definitely it will pass even through the penis okay so this is the urethra clear everyone okay now where the urethra is present okay that's a question there is a very fundamental question that was asked in neat exam the question is name the all of the following structure through which urethra will pass except you have to mark the answer except okay so you can see the urethra is passing through the prostate correct absolutely correct you can see the pro, urethra is passing through the bulbo urethra that's why it's called bulbo urethra okay so correct it is also passing through penis correct yes so that's why we say the prostate is having the urethra is having few parts okay let me let me let me use the board and draw it again okay okay so here yeah this one see this is the remaining diagram we have right now okay so for this what do we need right now to draw 
can you can you tell me what is this gland this is the prostate okay just to, just to imagine this green uh, this blue color is the you know this is the urethra so if i say urethra this is called pr i means prostatic urethra this is a prostatic urethra okay because this urethra is passing through the prostate okay all right the next part of the urethra is called mr okay not medical representative that you will meet afterwards i know this is a it's actually membranous urethra membranous urethra okay then there is some part then then you know penis will start which will protect your urethra all right so this urethra is called tell me beta penile urethra okay don't get confused with the first pier the first pier is the prostatic urethra and the last pier is the penile urethra let me complete the urethra there is you will say there is a urethral injury yeah so this is a complete urethra i have drawn so this is the first one is a prostatic urethra this is the first one i am marking for you the second one is the membranous urethra the third one is the penile urethra but i just want to give you a extra touch at your advanced level of the study we will you will also read that this part i mean at the starting of the penis the urethra is little different so we'll also say that's called bulbar urethra i have told you na the bulb of the penis the concept so the so we you already know the bulb of the penis so the urethra which is present just at the starting of the penis the urethra which is present at the starting of the penis it is named in a separate way as bulbar urethra if you want to remember you can if you don't want nothing you don't you need not to remember so this that's called bulbar urethra okay just i have told for you interest okay but definitely you have to remember the three parts of urethra Num number one is the prostatic urethra number two is the membranous urethra and number three is a penile urethra for male now you tell me using your basic idea for female how many parts you can expect now you tell me for female for female now mm -hmm. use your basics okay yeah use your basics i have drawn two the beautiful part. bladder so two are uh, two parts okay you tell me what are two parts you tell me prostatic urethra uh, are you saying prostatic urethra is present in male uh, i mean female are you saying that prostatic urethra is present in female yes or no no sir obviously no prostate is a gland which is present only in male not in female so definitely prostatic urethra i can't say so are you saying membranous urethra again no are you saying penile urethra again no so there is no subdivisions of urethra in case of female it's as simple as that okay so don't get confused so for female it's so simple this time this is the only time in the live i think when the female are so simple all right so uh, you can write uh, here the female is female uh, urethra has female urethra has female urethra has uh, no sub division okay all right so now the next question that we have to read the next question the next question on urethra because the entire listen there are many parts of the mcq from this chapter we will do one and we'll end i will finish that one and we'll jump into the ne next one the next level of mcq from the urethra if you say the next level of urethra the cross section of the penis okay the cross section of the penis if you cut the penis if you cut the penis what you will find okay so i am erasing this one and i am drawing it in a new way so if this is the penis okay first you have to know the basic structure of the penis this is called shaft of the penis and this is called bulb of the penis again oh, sorry this is called glans of the penis extremely sorry this is called glans of the penis g this is called shaft of the penis and i have already mentioned the starting of the penis is called tell me beta i have already mentioned bulb of the penis okay so bulb of the penis the first part then the shaft of the penis is called glans of the penis okay for mcq glans of the penis is very important for the neat exam very 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 important okay all right next question from the penis okay from mc at any discussion that i will do i will give value to your every second so i will not discuss anything which is not in ncert and which is not in the record history of previous year question paper so 
now I'm going to tell about the skin over the penis. The skin over the penis, it's a very important question. The skin of the penis, skin over the penis is like this. I'm drawing the skin over the penis. Okay, the skin over the penis, uh, you have to understand, yeah, this is the skin. But the skin over the glands of the penis have some different terminology, okay? This skin, which is present on the glands of the penis, it has a separate terminology and that's known as four skin, F-O-R-E-S-K-I-N. This is a simple name, but you know, biology is something which always try to make the things difficult with difficult names. So we have to give some difficult name with this skin and that's called prepuce. Okay, that's called prepuce. Now the next question, the prepuce is something which is covering glands, glands penis. It is covering the glands penis, not the sapped penis. Only it's covering the glands penis. Next question, which skin is movable? Which skin is not movable? The skin which is present on the shaft of the penis is not movable, but the skin which is present on the glands of the penis, I mean foreskin, this is your movable. At your language, or you can say retractile. Okay, it's a difficult term. You can also remember retractile. Okay, retractile. So the retractile play pen is retractile uh, foreskin or retractile prepuce is a uh, present, uh, you know, on the uh, on the foreskin only, on the foreskin only, or on the glance of the penis only. All right, clear everyone? Now the next level question. Yeah, the next level MCQ. The next level MCQ is, okay. Now this prepuce tail skin, or you can say the prepuce of the skin or prepuce of the penis, what's its importance, number one? And what are the different pathologies that might be associated uh, with the foreskin or the prepuce? Prepuce. Listen, if it's not retractile, if you find it's not retractile, then it's a difficulty during the sexual coitus. During the coitus, and that's called sexual intercourse, it's a difficulty if the uh, foreskin is not movable. Okay. Next question that uh, what is the procedure where we remove foreskin? So now you just write this question, removal of foreskin. That's a question of NCRT as well, removal of foreskin, or you can say prepuce. So removal of the foreskin, simply it's a small surgery or it's a small uh, step that is done to remove the skin only over the glands. This skin is removed, okay? I'm marking that in blue. This skin is cut and removed. So the glands penis will remain exposed or open. So this is called circumcision. Circumcision, okay? That's an incision and this was circumcision. Circumcision is actually, I mean, you are giving uh, the cut marks uh, on and a circle circle manner in a circle manner okay because spin is uh if you think about if you want to cut the skin you have to give a incision or cut through the blade in a circular fashion that's why it's called circumcision okay all right circumcision sorry c-u-m circumcision okay all right now the next question which is actually asked in neat exam when it is done at your level you have to remember two reasons one is one is religious, which two religion? Two, one, Mohammedan, number two, Jews. Number two, what is the another aspect or another ground in which we need to do it? That's called for the treatment purpose, for the treatment. What type of treatment that I've already explained? If a man, he doesn't have the retractile gland, the retractile foreskin or prepuce, it needs to be removed because it will give two difficulty. One, when the urine will come, when the urine will come drop by drop, 
it will simply go here and it will be deposited here and in future it will cause the infection in this area okay so that's why this is one this this condition is called phyomosis phyomosis one and i have already mentioned retractile prepuce is or something i am saying the glans is a very sensitive area you know glans is the most sensitive area of the penis so definitely glans is needed for sexual intercourse or coitus so definitely definitely uh, for treatment of you can say like related with the uh, problems related with coitus problem related with coitus so these are the entire uh, question we have read on glans penis and foreskin now the next question cross section of the penis cross section of the penis cross section of the penis if you do the cross section of the penis you know in the center of the penis what you are expecting beta the pr that means penile urethra okay but if you cross sec the penis like like this is the penis and if you are just doing the cross section okay if you are doing the cross section so if you are doing the cross section of the penis in this way you can see it is looking like a triangle why triangle no, why not quadrangle why not cylinder because it's it's made up of three cylinder it's made up of three cylinder again i am writing suppose this is the first cylinder on top this is the second cylinder on top all right and below there is another cylinder on at bottom so if you join its center what structure you are finding beta tell me what structure you are finding triangle or quadrangle or cylinder tell me triangle. everyone do respond triangle. which structure triangle yeah triangle obviously so here we are finding three cylinder 1 2 3 okay at the cross section this is a cross section view and this is the actual view now you have to remember you have to know the name the structure 1 and the structure 2 is known as corpora cavernosa corpora cavernosa what is cavernosa means cavern means chamber cavern means chamber okay again i am repeating cavern means chamber so the structure 1 and structure 2 it is divided into multiple chambers multiple chambers it is divided into multiple chambers that's why it is called corpora cavern nosa okay multiple chambers so <clears throat> cavern means chambers now i want to tell you what is the significance of this it helps in accumulation of fluid while when why while the penis will erect while the penis will erect there will be accumulation of the fluid only in the structure 1 and the structure 2 okay so here i am writing this is something 1 and 2 which helps in penis erection straight away the question which sim which autonomic nervous system you know there are two type of autonomic nervous system in our body one is sympathetic and another is parasympathetic which autonomic system of our body helps in this work i mean erection of the penis or fluid accumulation in the corpora cavernosa this is para sim pathetic nervous system okay para sympathetic nervous system so uh, we have written all the mcqs together that structure 1 structure 2 which is present above it is the top okay this is the top above and this is the below okay this is the below now i want to tell you structure 3 is more important mcq structure 3 is more important mcq but why because through this structure 3 the passage of urine will go that means urethra okay so the structure 3 is urethra and i just want to tell you if you ever failed the structure 3 it will be sponge like appearance 
which is present below. Structure one and structure two, if you feel it's a hard structure, even in the flaccid pins. And structure three is always a spongy structure. And if you ever feel the structure three during micturation, you can clearly feel the flow of urine through the structure three. Okay. And this is something is called corpora spongiosum. Corpora spongiosum. So here I'm writing the another MCQ. Structure three is corpora spongiosum. What is the next level of MCQ that you have to know? This is the structure through which penile urethra will pass. Okay, so we have done each and every MCQ. Okay, I just want to tell you another question. Just you tell me. Which nervous system helps in micturation? I mean, urine flow. Again, it's, uh, some, it's not fully at your control. I just want to tell you, micturation is something. Yeah, we can control micturation with the help of only one sphincter. That's external sphincter, external urethral sphincter. But there is internal urethral sphincter. There's bladder muscle. Okay, but I just want to know that which nervous system contracts the bladder which nervous system relaxes the sphincter and that's why the urine will come sympathetic or parasympathetic it's always again tell me yeah are you one are you want to say okay. something yeah, yeah same same absolutely i'm just telling you one funda of our body any voiding of our that's i've already mentioned in my last youtube session that when you were considering the voiding be it your saliva secretions, okay, be it your, like, you know, uh, the stool, uh, stool release, or you consider, you consider your urine release, everything is parasympathetic. Again, I'm repeating for you, saliva secretions, your stool evacuation, or your urine evacuation, it's always parasympathetic. That's why parasympathetic is called nerve of voiding. It's called nerve of voiding. Are you getting me? Nerve of voiding. It's called nerve of voiding. Clear? Clear, everyone? Okay. All right. So, again, I just I'll write this is again parasympathetic nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system. So, we have done all the MCQs related with the urethra, related with the penis. Uh, now we will focus uh, completely on the proximal reproductive system. What is called proximal, what is called distal. Anything which is distant from our body is called distal. If I say penis, it's distal. If I say about the, uh, if I say about the bladder, it's proximal because it's close to my body. Okay. So, all right. So, the next thing that you have to understand, these questions we have covered from the penis and the urethra. The next thing we will talk about today on the on the other other organs first i want to tell you the organ which is actually the testis okay before uh, telling detail about the testis i just want to tell you uh, note this point from the diagram and then definitely i will uh, write uh, many more things here so the first you look at the first you look at the look at the testis okay this is the testis which is present beautifully in the scrotum okay this is scrotum it is a scrotal sac okay it's a sac like structure uh, or pouch-like structure. You can see this is a sac-like structure or pouch-like structure, uh, which is uh, uh, which is beyond your abdominal cavity. Okay, it's beyond your abdominal cavity. So I just want to tell you, if I if, if I want to ask that, uh, uh, what is the root? Okay, I just want to tell. You, do you think this testis is present always in the scrotum, or initially we had testis uh, uh, in abdomen? Yes, this is this concept is correct. Initially, we had testis in our abdomen. At the age of nine months, nine months, just nine months, this testis descend, descend down. Okay. Again, I'm repeating this question. Okay. Uh, so here, the next level of discussion is starting. That question number one from the testis, the question number one, uh, which is very important, the question number one, is what is the actual locations of origin of testis? Okay, the location of origin of the testis is something different. I'm not mentioning in detail, but just you have to remember 
it's always inside abdomen here i'm just drawing a abdomen i think you can easily agree to me now follow me this is the borders of the abdomen here i'm drawing this is the ribs rib i think you know this is the rib okay so above this you have the thorax clear everyone beta above it you have the thorax and this is your flank of abdomen the flank the side of the abdomen okay all right and this is the your 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 this is the end of the abdomen because from here your leg or groin will start what region is called groin okay this is important what region is called groin yeah this this is called groin let me mark and say you this is called groin this is called groin okay this area is called groin g r o i n this area is called groin the junction between the abdomen and the thigh is called groin be it male or female okay now now you have to understand there is a structure which is almost to the center of the abdomen it's called umbilicus but for today what you have to know that there is a structure which is beyond the abdomen uh, uh, or okay outside the abdomen this is called scrotum okay in the scrotum we have testes okay both testes normally we should have both testes beautifully present in the scrotum next question question is uh, sir uh, this testis is present in the scrotum all right but can you say that uh, initially where it was it were present abdomen okay so initially it were present in abdominal cavity for you this is uh, this is more than enough then what happened sir from the abdominal cavity say this is the testis at the abdomen from the abdominal cavity it descent downward it descent downward all right and i just want to tell you what is the name of the canal what is the name of the route through which it will come down that's something you have to know so it will come down through a structure which is called inguinal canal it's called inguinal canal okay so this is something called inguinal canal through inguinal canal through inguinal canal let me draw it in a better way <clears throat> okay all right so this is this is the inguinal canal this is the inguinal canal mark in this way in yolo structure through this yolo canal your from the abdomen uh, the testis is coming in the scrotum clear everyone this is called inguinal canal all right now uh, what is uh, another question that you have heard from inguinal canal the question is very easy that's called what is called inguinal hernia what is called inguinal hernia you have heard that's why i'm telling so what is inguinal hernia hernia is like what is hernia listen what is hernia hernia is anything you can say like in a bus okay i'm giving a best example of hernia in a bus there are 10 seats in a bus there are 10 seats 10 tickets are there 10 seats are there 10 people should enter in the bus but you have found one extra person somehow has entered in the bus that incident is called hernia okay that is called hernia so when you find a structure be it a normal structure be it abnormal structure when it is entering in any unwanted space that's called hernia okay i'm just telling you okay now everything will be clear you tell me you tell me what should enter in the inguinal canal set testis and the spermatic cord okay i will tell you what is spermatic cord shortly so testis and spermatic cord okay just write what is the normal structure or content that should be present in the inguinal canal it's testis and spermatic cord so testis and spermatic cords are structure cord actually both so you can say like cord or cords or whatever so testis and spermatic cord that should only enter uh in the inguinal canal but 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 what else like you know in the abdomen you have intestine as well you know no there is intestine as well if you have ever found that your intestine is also trying to enter through the inguinal canal again i am repeating if you have found that not only this testis and spermatic cord getting a small window getting a small window your intestine is also trying to take advantage to pass into this canal that's called hernia 
and this type of hernia can happen in many organ and many places of our body but at your level you just remember inguinal hernia other hernias are not at all related at you so you just remember if your intestine or any abdominal structure is trying to enter in the inguinal canal apart from testis and spermatic cord because those two are only normal structure we will consider those are normal apart from that if any structure be it your intestine be it your large intestine any structure if it tries to enter through the inguinal canal that will be considered the incident is called hernia so hernia is abnormal you can say abnormal protrusion or in a simple way you can say it's abnormal entry of structure through any normal uh way okay normal window in a normal window abnormal structure is entering okay okay so this is all about the inguinal canal but another question i want to tell you what is the spermatic cord spermatic cord is a cord spermatic cord is not a single structure spermatic cord is a structure where what how the spermatic cord is made up of spermatic cord is made up of vas deferens plus blood vessel plus nerve plus lymphatic system so basically i want to tell that uh, vas deferens present blood vessels present nerve present lymphatic system present everything is present in the spermatic cord but why listen if it is this if this is your testis it needs blood supply so definitely there will be artery and there will be a vein all right uh, you know there will be accumulation of the tissue fluid and you know our lymphatic system is actually draining our tissue fluid so also you need lymphatic system all right you know but and another one you know in the testes we produce something which is called spermatozoa that is the male gamete that should be also transported now that should be also transported so definitely vas deferens is that structure which will carry the spermatozoa from the testes to the to a structure to a structure in the abdomen that is called uh, i will mention that one definitely so these are the structure combinedly known as spermatic cord are you getting me yes or no yes sir now you tell me this spermatic cord is present in inguinal canal this statement is true or false spermatic cord is present in inguinal canal this statement is true or false what do you say what do you say true what do you say yes true. absolutely true absolutely true absolutely true uh so because you know the, when your testes in the are in the scrotum or scrotal sac obviously these are the structure this uh, green color structure this is the red color structure this is something you can say another red color structure and that is your nothing but uh cord so spermatic cord is a structure which is present in inguinal canal there is no doubt all right so now the question is that next question that why did the testes come down why did the testes come down or the why did the testes descend okay this is definitely a reason it should remain it may remain in the abdominal cavity but it didn't so why did it come down okay so the next question why the testes this is called testes descent so the descent of the testes to the scrotum why first question is why two mcq answer uh, basically one mc one only one answer straight forward answer you have to know that in abdomen the temperature is so high it's a core body temperature what is the uh, core body temperature core means if i take the thermometer if i if i puncture your abdomen and i put the th thermometer to your abdominal like at, at, at the center of the abdomen just puncturing your abdomen i put the thermometer at the center of the abdomen that's called uh, that's something it's called uh, 
core body temperature and that's you know 37 degree celsius or it's called 98.4 degree fahrenheit don't ask me about the kelvin you can calculate i know so so abdomen if you know its temperature is 37 degrees celsius which is not suitable for production of spermatozoa it's high temperature actually testis needs less two degree less temperature two degrees celsius mm, less temperature okay two degree celsius less temperature clear everyone and that's why there's a need of testes to come down clear everyone yes or no okay yes, okay so that's why testes uh descent next question so you know the testis is present there so next question if this is the testis which is present in the scrotum uh, I just want to tell you this is a, this structure is called epididymis from where ultimately have house difference will form and it will go like this. Okay, so can you and you know with this vast difference I can easily imagine this uh, lymphatic system I can imagine a vein as well I can imagine arteries as well. So I think you know this structure is known as spermatic cord clear everyone. At the same time. Uh, at the same time, I want to tell you <clears throat> that there is a structure which will connect the skin of the scrotum, skin of the scrotum and testis. Can you tell me? The skin of the testis and scrotum will be connected by whom? This is called gu bar na culum. Gu bar na culum is a structure which will connect the screen, skin of the scrotum and the lower pole of the testis. This is called lower pole of the testis. Okay. Don't say north pole, south pole, upper pole and lower pole is the correct terminology for the testis. All right. Now the next question is uh, how the testis descend? How, how testis descend? Uh, first, what is the name of the root? You already know the name of the root is inguinal canal. Everyone, please do turn on your video through the inguinal canal. Second question, which hormone, that's a straightforward question for everyone, every year in the need, which hormone helps in descent of testes? Which hormone helps in descent of testes? Can you tell me? If I find anyone is uh, turning off the video, I will not allow in the next class. So which hormone helps in descent of the testes? Which hormone helps in descent of the testis? Can you tell me? Listen, there are many controversies uh, behind this answer, uh, even in the MCQ books. But what I will suggest to answer, the best answer you will answer FSH greater than testosterone. These two hormones help in descent of testis. So FSH is who produce FSH, who produce testosterone, we'll read subsequently, don't worry about that. But, but what actually uh, this hormone does, uh, like FSH and testosterone, they helps in contraction of the gubernaculum. Like, just imagine, if your gubernaculum, uh, initially the gubernaculum is like this. Okay, just I'm drawing for the same in the other uh, scrotum. So this is your gubernaculum. Just imagine in this way, this is the gubernaculum, this is the gubernaculum. The testis is still lying high. So if your gubernaculum is contracting like in this way, you know physics well, okay, like with a force, it is contracting downward. So obviously your, this testis will come down. Now for this gubernacular contraction, this FSH helps and this testosterone helps. Clear everyone? But always mark FSH first because as per at your level, I found in many, most of the MCQs book, they, are, they have mentioned FSH is the best answer than testosterone, okay? If you get both, that's a, another, uh, that's a beautiful thing. But if you, if you're not getting both as option, you have to mark FSH as the answer of descent of testes. Now, uh, the next question, the next question is again, uh, very, very important that the cross section of the testes, cross section, what you will find if you cut the testes and this diagram is even present in your NCRT. So I just want to show you first. Yeah. This is the structure. If you cut a testis, you will get. 
you might be confused how i am getting this okay so all right uh, this is a structure you are getting when you are cutting the testes in this way okay can you tell me okay can you tell me can you tell me this one okay let me ask everyone if this is the testes if this is the testes and i am cutting the testes in this way i can also cut the testes in this way okay so this is actually uh, this is called transverse section and uh, this is called longitudinal section all right so here first i will draw myself a longitudinal longitudinal section for you and then in the ncert it's n c e r t the diagram whatever is given is transverse section of the testes okay so let me draw first the longitudinal section of testes so if i draw the longitudinal section of the testis this is the testis you should draw in a bigger way then it will be easier to draw okay first what is the cover of testis what is the cover of testis okay so in the cover of the testis you will find three important layers that you have to know the first one let me use the black color to draw it okay this one okay so here i have drawn that okay uh, actually this is continuous with the abdominal peritoneum that is something i want to tell i think you have the idea of peritoneum which is the balloon of abdomen and with that balloon of the abdomen another balloon of the testis is connected and you know in the peritoneum you have fluid so obviously in the in this cavity also you will have a small amount of fluid but if the, if this fluid goes really really high then your testis size will be very very high and that will give you discomfort and that's a disease is called hydrocele so in the hydrocele you will accumulate more and more fluid in this chamber now the question so what is its name that's the mcq question the question and the answer you have to know this is called tunica you might be surprised with the, its name because it's known as tunica vaginalis it's known as tunica tunica vaginalis so don't get confused the tunica vaginalis though its name is containing vagina but it's not present in the female it's not present in female it's present in male it's tunica vaginalis like uh, i think those who have attended my youtube session i told that something like tropomyosin a tropomyosin is a protein which is not a part of myosin at all there are so many misleading terminology in biology and those are favorite topic for paper setter so be very very uh, cautious and uh, you should know those facts so tunica vaginalis so tunica vaginalis uh, it's the outer most cover of the testis and which is actually continuous with the peritoneum i have given the second information third information if you accumulate more and more fluid here that will lead to a disease which is which will ultimately will be a very big testis many time i found when i do ultrasound i found a patient is coming with a big testis and when i do ultrasound i can see clearly the water in this uh, tunica vaginalis so yeah this is something you have to know all right uh, this is the outermost layer the second layer if i know the, the second layer okay the second layer i am drawing in blue color this is something this is something and the mcq is more important here because this layer is made up of a protein which is most abundant in animal now you say the answer most abundant in animal what is the name of the protein collagen absolutely correct answer who told the answer who have told the answer srinjan das absolutely correct srinjan i am proud of you okay so i think you have seen the previous video of mine as well like okay. so i have discussed many a time this question so this is a collagen uh this is a collagen i am i'm drawing right now the collagen collagen protein and this collagen protein is entirely making the second layer okay the second layer it's it's the first layer and the second layer okay so now this is the second layer and this second layer which is made up of entirely collagen protein the catch of it is tunica al bugi nia al bugi nia just write this word collagen it's entirely made up of collagen 
protein. It's a very important catch. That's why I mentioned it. Now, uh, what is tunica albuginea? What it does actually, it forms a few septa or, or chamber-like things, or you can say like a small, small compartment type of things. It gives away this type of things. And ultimately your testes will be compartmentalized. Okay, now the question, how many compartments you have in a single testis? Here I can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, how many? Hundred. No, wrong, 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 wrong. So just I'm writing, it's collagen. And again, again another writing thing, and this is something called compartment. How many compartment? 250 to 300 compartment. 250 to 300 compartments. Now, in each compartment, what we will find? We will find the factory of spermatozoa. This is the factory of spermatozoa I'm drawing right now. Initial part is coiled, remaining it's straight. Initial part is coiled factory, then it's straight. Okay, now this factory of spermatozoa or sperm is known as, it's, like, it's actually a tube. It's a tube, it's a tube, okay? If you cut it, you will find it's nothing but a tube. Okay, so it's actually a tube. This is called seminiferous tubule. This is called seminiferous tubule. Now I am to tell you the second information. In in each compartment, how many you know, how many seminiferous tubules do you have? So next question: two hundred to uh, two hundred fifty to three hundred compartment I have, and then in each compartment I have per compartment I have uh, two two three. Two to three ST. What is ST? Semini ferrous tubule. Semini ferrous tubule. All right. So now tell me how many semini ferrous, how many semini ferrous tubule is present in our testes? How many semini ferrous tubule is present in our testes? It's around, you have to say 800. It's around 800 semini ferrous tubule per testes. Per testes, you have 800 semini ferrous. Tubules. All right. Clear everyone? Clear everyone? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, nice. Sir. Okay, so the next question the what is the third layer? The third layer is uh, made up of blood vessels, though. So I should definitely, definitely draw it in red color. Uh, this is the third layer I am drawing right now. This, this, this. I think I should draw first in this. So can you can you follow me? Or can you follow me the third layer I'm drawing? Yes or no? Yes or no, beta? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is the third layer I'm drawing here. This is the third layer I'm drawing here. And this is called tunica. This is the third layer. It's known as Tunica vasculosa. Tunica vasculosa. It is made up of blood vessels. Just write it that it is mostly made up of blood vessels. Clear everyone? Clear everyone? Yes or no? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, so now uh, you have to know that these are the different layers that I have covered. Now you tell me if I say the tissue which is present in between in between seminiferous tubules, like here I'm drawing the tissue present in between two subsequent or consecutive seminiferous tubules. What is this tissue known as? Can you tell me? What is this tissue known as, which is present as a packing material of seminiferous tubule? This is called interstitial cell. This is called interstitial cell. Okay, this is called interstitial cell. So this is called this is called interstitial cell. Can you see interstitial cell? I have written in yellow. It's called interstitial cell. So what we have read in this structure, we have read the three layers or three covers, three layered cover is present in around the testis. 
the first layer is tunica albuginea sorry the first layer is tunica vaginalis the second layer is called tunica albuginea and the third layer is called tunica vasculosa then we have read the interior of each compartment how the compartment is made of of the compartment is made by the contributions septa contributing septa this is called septa Sep, this is called septa the green uh, the blue color structure which is invading from outside to inside it's called septa they are forming the compartments and in the each uh, and in each compartment what is the uh, what are the number of uh, seminiferous tubules you have 223 what is the total number then 800 almost that's the question you have to know now i am telling you how i will get uh, that diagram which is given in NCRT. If you cut this test, this is a longitudinal section. But if you cut this same test is in this way, okay, in this way, if you cut the same test is in this way, you will get this diagram. You will get this diagram. This one, just to learn. Yeah, this one. Okay, this one. So now you tell me, what is this? This is a magnified version. This is a diameter of that cylinder, the sperm factory. What is this? What is this? Yeah, this is seminiferous tubules, that red color structure. Okay, this is seminiferous ferrous tubule. This is a seminiferous tubule, all right? This is a seminiferous tubule, all right. So now you tell me, what is this structure? What is this in between uh, seminiferous tubule? I have also used yellow color previously. What is this? The blood vessels. No. Interstitials. Absolutely correct answer. Who has told the answer? Fantastic relevance. This is called the power of integration. So you have to integrate the diagram when I'm drawing anything because I have already drawn now. Previously, also I have told you this is the this is the seminiferous tubule. Okay, this is the seminiferous tubule. This is the seminiferous tubule. This is the seminiferous tubule. Now you tell me what is the packing material of the seminiferous tubule? This is nothing but the interstitial cells. Now there are a few selective cells in the interstitial cells which is helping in production of the testosterone and 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 that's called lady cell that's called lady cell out of these yellow colored cells there are a few important uh, let me mark it in green okay okay uh, so this green uh, cells will ultimately help in uh, will ultimately help in testosterone production so this is something is called interstitial cells of lady okay all right clear everyone the concept okay so let me write from this, you will form interstitial cells of Leydig. And you know the, why the Leydig is important. You know the Leydig is important because it will give rise to a male hormone that's called testosterone. Clear, everyone? Okay. Now the next question. Okay, the next question. Okay, just hold on. Okay, so, so the next thing uh, that you have to know right now, uh, what, is, uh, what, what is this structure known as seminiferous tubule? So if I cross check this seminiferous tubule, what I will get? You can see there are many things now here. You can see many things up there actually. You can see uh, something structure is here, something is here, something is here. I will also mark everything, but before that you should know uh, I, I just want to draw myself and, and to show you what is the structure. So if I cut a seminiferous tubule, what will be there? If you cut a seminiferous tubule, this will be like, you know, if you are just cutting a cylinder. If you are cutting a seminiferous tubule, I mean you are cutting a cylinder. So when you are cutting a cylinder, uh, what are the structure you will find? There are so many cells which will be uh, residing, which is lying on the basement membrane on uh, that is a cover of the cylinder so you you know this is called bm basement membrane i think definitely you have heard the name basement membrane that's a concept since the epithelium you have read that for epithelium 
the cells are present on a flat sheet uh, which is made up of again collagen basement membrane is again made up of collagen okay and that's why you can find collagen as most abundant okay so this is this is this is the basement membrane which is made up of collagen and here also you know this is the basement membrane on which you will find different different cells okay so the cells i am drawing here these are called the first layer four further cells of spermatozoa four further cells of sperm okay four further cells and these are called these are called germinal epithelium or these are also called spermatogonia you can say as your choice so this is called spermatogonia i'm simply writing gonia you can also say like germinal epithelium you can say germinal epithelium all right this is also called germinal epithelium but this is a but and there is a most important mcq the mcq is on the topic which is present what is what is present in between in between in between this gonia there are few different type of cells little bit taller than its nearby cell but not more in number very few in number like here i am drawn two two you can also draw three maximally maximally this cell are called something which is a mcq cell and this is called your satoli cell this is called your satoli cell satoli cell why this is a very famous mcq hello am i audible yes sir okay so satoli cells you have to remember this satoli cell uh, why it's important number 1 it's important because they will store glycogen they will store glycogen so obviously from the glycogen you will get glucose now who will feed that glucose or who will uh, uh, will take that glucose that glucose is needed for spermatozoa okay so that's why your satoli cell is feeding your satoli cell is feeding your spermatozoa i will draw the spermatozoa so here i am drawing the spermatozoa in the black color this is a spermatozoa you can clearly see the head of the sperm is embedded inside the cytoplasm of the satoli cell because this spermatozoa they know that they will get the nutrition in the cytoplasm of the satoli cell so that's why satoli cell is also known as nars cell it's also known as nars cell the next information that you have to know about the satoli cell why this satoli cell is again important okay the satoli cell is again important because the satoli cell is again important because they are big that's why they will form a barrier with blood again i am repeating you suppose this is my blood vessels if you find anything in the blood vessels anything is blood vessels can easily come in the testes it is very dangerous for testes like if anything in the brain, uh, blood can go into the brain it is very dangerous if anything in the mother's blood can go into the baby that is also very dangerous so that's why god has gifted something three important uh, barrier those barrier are called blood testes barrier blood brain barrier and blood placental barrier so here we will talk about the blood placental barrier and these all three barriers are made up of three important mcq cells you have to remember whenever you will run this three barrier i will definitely mention who is the contributor who is the main hero behind forming this barrier but for right now the blood testes barrier is formed by the contribution of tell me everyone everyone do tell blood test is barrier satoli cell satoli cell yeah absolutely correct blood test is barrier it's obviously satoli cell i'm not writing again and again 
Number three role of Sertoli cell. Okay. Number three is Sertoli cell is producer of few hormones, but not testosterone, not testosterone. Sertoli cell doesn't produce testosterone because it is produced by, you already know something, this, uh, outside the Sertoli, uh, outside the seminiferous tubule, that's called Leydig cell. But it produces something which is called estrogen. So it releases estrogen, male estrogen is released by Sertoli cell. All right. Uh, apart from that, apart from that, it also releases a hormone which is called inhibin. It also releases another hormone, which is called uh, Mullerian regression factor. Now I will say its role. And now listen, uh, this is another popular question, which I have found in the neat avias. I think you know already that name of this app. It's uh, NTA uh, themselves uh, published a uh, app and few questions, uh, which um, which is like a few questions which might come in the NEET exams, but eventually in 2020 history, we found that it was not at all important. Though I don't know what would happen this year and I will inform you definitely in the next year that how much relevant NEET obvious is. Though it's their app, but well, what everyone expected that if you solve every question from the NEET obvious, you will get common, but it didn't happen in the last year. Uh, but definitely that all the questions are very good you can do solve neat obvious question as well. But try to stick one book. I found many a time students, uh, they are solving uh, like physics from this book. My friend has said this book. My friend is right now studying in another institute. So don't do it. Be honest, be religious to your one and only book. For biology, I have already mentioned, if you do MTG neat champion, not only me, even your Dipangshu Bhaiya, who has, uh, I think you know the score in a first in this year NEET exam in from West Bengal. Okay, you, you can clearly see in the interview sections, I have uh, I mentioned that also. He also mentioned that, yes, I have read only one book. Okay, so do MTG NEET champion from biology to NCIT. If you read this book two times, three times, four times, five times, that is more important. Okay. And don't be worried if you, suppose your friend is asking, can you tell me that question? It is not in NCRT. Don't think that, don't feel down. Don't feel down. If you feel uh, that your friend is asking any question, tell me this, this question. Okay, I have, I have read somewhere. You just check that whether it is present in NCRT or not. If it is not, don't worry. Because in NCRT biology, we have to cover 38 chapters and there are a lot of information. Trust me, there are a lot of information. Even teachers are unable to recall all those information at a time. So definitely. All right. So the next question, uh, if I say about the estrogen, the estrogen is released by, uh, you know, Sartoli cell. And uh, now, now you tell me though, there's a question. The question is, which of the following cell of testes is uh, is uh, is acted or uh, will be acted by FSH. Again, I am right, uh, repeating the question: Which of the following hormone in which of the following cell in the testes, which of the following cell in the testes will be acted by hormone FSH? Male to have FSH also because they have pituitary also. From the pituitary, from the pituitary, there is a there is a hormone. It's called FSH. That FSH will work on the on the seminiferous tubule. So I'm writing here uh, on on the Sertoli cell, and ultimately you will release estrogen. In the same way, in the female, you know, in the female, FSH works on ovary. That's why they release estrogen. So always the FSH is a stimulator of estrogen release, but this time the organ is changing for them. It's ovary, for them it is testes and the cell, if you be specific, the cell is Sartoli cell. Clear everyone? Okay, now the next question. Now suppose you are a male 
and your body is releasing uh, your body is secreting fsh it is stimulating the test your sartoli cell and eventually there are, there are a lot of estrogen which is in the blood what you have to do you need a checking mechanism you need a control mechanism for it that's why for 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 male to check this process that fsh will stimulate my sartoli cell and i will release estrogen to check this process the same cell will release a hormone which is called anti fsh or inhibin so inhibin is anti fsh inhibin is anti fsh which is also released by sartoli cell you need to release anti fsh inhibin otherwise you will can, what would happen that your uh, your brain is stimulating uh, sartoli cell with the help of fsh and your estrogen is quite high in the blood okay now the next question what is mrf which is also released by sartoli cell the mrf is something which is called mullerian regression factor i just want to tell you for female the uterus for female the uterus is made up of by the fusions of two tube those two tubes are called mullerian tube mullerian tube mullerian tube okay let me write it nicely this time the handwriting is not good so mullerian rian tube so this is the mullerian tube which will fuse together to form the uterus and i think you 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 don't want your mullerian tube for the, being a male you don't want your mullerian tube to be present in your body because in embryonic structure in male and female both have mullerian tube for male there is no need of mullerian tube and it's normal that for the male the mullerian tube will get degenerated okay and how it gets degenerated in male by action of a hormone by action of a factor from male which is called mullerian regressing factor which is released by sartoli cell clear everyone clear everyone so if your mullerian regression factor is not good enough uh, what would happen that uh, you will give maturity to your mullerian tubes and male you will you can get the partial portions of the uterus and the male female like organs as well okay so we have done most of the parts like uh, we have uh, so how many roles of sartoli cells we have covered we have covered roles like number 1 uh, you know for you know blood test is barrier we have covered we have also told uh, for the mullerian tube like the nars cell uh, so for the sartoli cell we have mentioned it is nars cell number 3 uh, for the sartoli cell we have mentioned something is called uh, you know inhibin okay inhibin uh, i have mentioned i have mentioned estrogen uh, okay i have also mentioned mullerian regression factor and uh, this time i will mention uh, another thing which is called abp what is abp androgen not abp anondo this is uh, p this is actually something is called androgen binding peptide or you can say testosterone binding peptide so androgen binding peptide what is its role androgen binding peptide if you see this is a seminiferous tubule and if you have seen this is the sartoli cell i want to tell you a very important role here that uh, okay first you tell me testosterone why the why where the testis is being where the testosterone is being produced inside the seminiferous tubule or outside the seminiferous tubule outside outside so it is it is the testosterone is a hormone which is being produced at outside of seminiferous tubule but where it need to go it needs to go inside the seminiferous tubule now you think about that it's a very precious material which is coming beyond which is coming outside the st seminiferous tubule and present inside the environment of the seminiferous tubule so definitely you will definitely want to lose it you definitely you don't want to lose it okay you don't want to lose it so how will you keep it remain confined in this structure 
there is a specific protein that will be released by by this sertoli cell sc this is the sc okay and this summary uh, this protein are actually something these proteins are called abp when testosterone binds to abp it become high molecular weight and it on escape the compartment of seminiferous tubule but if it is not bound with abp this red color testosterone can easily escape the compartment of seminiferous tubule so basically abp is maintaining high concentration of testosterone inside seminiferous tubule now why this high testosterone required inside the seminiferous tubule that's the mcq so put a five mark put a star on this question why high testosterone is required in the seminiferous tubule that's the question the answer is very very simple high testosterone or simply the same mcq question what is the role of testosterone inside the testes number one role maturation of spermatid to spermatozoa i am drawing the structure of the spermatid which is not having any tail you know something called tubulin protein which is actually or flagella of the uh, sperm you know it's called spermatid which is not having any tail but when you will have a tail to this structure that's known as spermatozoa so there is a difference between tid that is spermatid and spermatozoa in form of tail the tail addition for the addition of the tail you require definitely testosterone hormone okay so definitely for the maturation of the sperm that uh, you know the most matured stage is spermatozoa you require this hormone that is called testosterone and this is the last step of formation of the testosterone uh, spermatozoa that we also mentioned in the uh, discussion of gametogenesis next question uh, uh, next uh, next point where we else require testosterone we i have also mentioned the descent of testes i have also mentioned the descent of testes in the descent of the testes i have also mentioned though i mentioned if it is the best answer for the descent of the testes from abdomen to scrotum where uh, do you require testosterone okay apart from this can you can you tell can you tell me one is descent of testes and this maturation of the sperm and another is you have to remember that for the development of the secondary sexual character okay now i i am not telling you listen 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 there is a difference between secondary reproductive organ and secondary sexual character secondary sexual character means the character which will decide that you are male or female like for male the voice will be thick voice for female it will be thin voice for male they will have beard for female they, they don't have for the female they ha they do have the breast for male they don't have matured breast and like the muscularity if i consider for male they will have muscularity for female they don't have muscularity so these are few secondary sexual characteristics which will be con which will be controlled so secondary sexual characteristics i just want to tell you one important and very very surprising information before you all i think most of you have heard the name susmita shen i think most of you have heard the name the world um uh, world famous susmita shen i think you have heard okay uh actually actually it's not she it's actually he okay you might be surprised you might be surprised sushmita shen is actually by the chromosomal study is not a female he is a male he but in in his body the testosterone is not working due to the deficiency or defective testosterone receptor there is a disease it's called androgen insensitivity disease and shushmita sen is right now su suffering the disease since long so he is or she is whatever you say basically it's uh, it's something which is called androgen insensitivity okay all right the 
all right so this is called androgen insensitivity so if you, so if you have testosterone but your body is not receiving the testosterone that's called uh, you, you don't have the receptor of the testosterone well the uh, that's a disease for shushmitation anyways so i just uh, tried to mention the secondary character is very important for shushmitation he is not having the secondary male character uh, and so he is having the secondary female character all right so now we have discussed this portions and uh, i will do some ncert surgeries because this is my style of teaching you already know whenever you will read when i will teach anything i will also show you how the mcqs will be framed from ncert as well this all pdfs are already available in your website go and check uh, it and think uh, most of you know it so the discussion that we have uh, conducted today uh, this is all about the steps uh, okay uh, <clears throat> before that there is something called fertilization insemination parturition that we will discuss uh, subsequently not today so uh, i have already mentioned the pair of testes it's not testes whenever it's plural it's testes that is something i have mentioned uh, what is external genitalia external genitalia means the organ what can be seen from outside like i can't show you the bladder right now of any person but a person you can see the penis you can see the scrotum those are called external genitalia all right now what is called accessory duct and accessory gland accessory duct and accessory glands are those anything with apart from testis so i think if you say vas deferens it's accessory duct if you say prostate it's accessory gland if you say bulbourethral gland it's accessory gland uh if you say about the seminal vesicle it's a gland now i have already mentioned this information 2 degree celsius please do remember in your option you will get 2 degree fahrenheit as well so just try to remember you require 34 to 30 Five degree Celsius temperature. Don't say ninety six degree Fahrenheit, okay? Because many times I found this MCQs and people are very confused. They they only know the figure two, the digit two, but you have to point out this is Celsius. Two degree Celsius less temperature is required, okay? Okay, all right. And uh, what is the dimension of the testis? That's a very popular question. You should remember uh, di dimension of the testis and dimension of the ovary as well. The normal dimension for the testis, you remember, it's in length. It should be like four to five. Uh, always centimeter, obviously. Four to five centimeter, and centimeter. Okay, and and here it's two to three. Two to three centimeter. All right, for the ovary, it's like uh, yeah, for ovary, it's like uh, if you say the ovary, it's like uh, four and it's like three. Okay, but very important MCQ, male. So four to five, two to three. I have already mentioned the number of compartment. You can see two fifty. I have already mentioned the number of compartment. Uh, can you can you follow it? Yes or no, beta? Two fifty. Yes, I have uh, yeah, and all that compartments are known as lobules. You can also write that. there i haven't mentioned that all that compartments are called lobules so lobules are made up of if i if i ask you tunica albuginea tunica vaginalis tunica uh, vasculosa what is the answer tunica albuginea albuginea absolutely correct answer now i have mentioned uh, uh, in each lobule you will have multiple seminiferous tubules and that seminiferous tubules are nothing but the factory of the spermatozoa and i have already mentioned that in that seminiferous tubule on the basement membrane you have something which is called spermatogonia okay mostly okay that's something i have already mentioned and also in the basement membrane you have sartori cell so if or what are two type of cells that can be present on the basement membrane of the sartori sorry the basement membrane of the seminiferous tubule only two type of cells can directly present on the basement membrane of the seminiferous tubule one is gonia another is tolly sir tolly okay so gonia and tolly can only present on the seminiferous tubule basement membrane okay all right and uh, the next one uh, that's something also called germinal epithelium uh, gonia cell is also called germinal epithelium mainly and there is a process is called gametogenesis or spermatogenesis from which through which from the gonia you will get the most matured version of the sperm that's called spermatozoa i would discuss that in a separate class okay the next one uh, 
here is the front section or uh, this is actually the real intact uh, diagram of the male genital organ okay so you can see the all similar structures here again just you tell me what is this called as you this is that crossing point i have mentioned this is a cross crossing point of uh, that one structure from the kidney which is called the ureter and this is the another structure you know from the testes okay that's called you already know what is this vas difference okay now here i will tell you another important uh, structure that's called seminiferous tubule oh, sorry that's called seminal vesicle this is called the seminal vesicles i will also mention don't worry which is present behind the bladder this is another structure don't worry just i will draw a simplified diagram for you and it will be a crystal clear okay and uh, most of the things you know this is the urethra any doubt beta urethra let me draw it in a uh, blue color this is the urethra okay you know also the parts of urethra and the journey of urethra you already know what is the journey of urethra this in this journey of urethra you will meet you will you will meet prostate you will meet uh you know this is bulbo urethral so you will miss you will meet uh, coopers and you will meet the penis on the either side and this is you know is called corpora spongiosum on the either side okay so now i would again draw the structure of this one uh, to explain i have drawn the structure of the testes beforehand as well but now how this uh seminiferous tubules are actually present that is something you have to know so here you have to know that yeah just draw this thing testis the cover of the testis we have already uh, we have already done that discussion so here i just want to tell you suppose only one compartment i am drawing here okay just hold on yeah and in this compartment and in this compartment this and in this compartment do remember this is the seminiferous tubule so seminiferous tubule has its journey the first part of the cylinder seminiferous tubule is a cylinder you know na it's a cylinder though it's look like a small coil spring but it's not actually spring it's actually small cylinder because in which if you cut it you know the structure is circle so it's called coiled coiled seminiferous tubule after the coiled seminiferous tubule that part is straight i have drawn that that's called straight seminiferous tubule and the next part uh, when all the straight seminiferous tubule will meet together then you will be very much confused you will be very much confused and that is something the network like structure that's why it's called reti testis okay when all the straight tubules are mean uh, uh, merging together forming a junction or network okay that's actually called you know that's called actually reti testis why reti reti for reticulum reticulum means network and after that from from that reticulum testis i'm i'm and taking another color for a better understanding you will get small 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 tubule which is actually called vasa efferentia which is called efferentia efferentia i f f e r e n a t i a vasa efferentia okay vasa efferentia okay now this vasa efferentia will join together and they will form a structure which is now not in the testis rather outside the testis and this is something i am drawing here this is called apg timis this structure is called this is called a p t di mes m e s all right so after the vasa efferentia this is called this is a bit tricky structure and looking uh, looking like a comma so this is called apd timis now this apd dimes it's a, it's a more defined structure and that's why we the biologists are imagining it into three parts like we are imagining it is the head of apd dimes this is the body of apd dimes and we are imagining this is the tail of apd dimes the head of apd dimes is also 
known as also known as okay the body let me first write the body it's called corpus okay this is called caudal okay okay so and this is called caput so caput of epidermal linus corpus or body or caudal or tail uh, to my opinion the mcq will lie on the tail the question is when we are getting the apd dimis then you are on the way to form another structure which is called vas deferens this is called vas deferens so my question is from which part of the apd dimis vas deferens will form head body or tail your vas deferens is actually continuation of the tail of apd dimis okay so here the all the structural mcqs we have done but few things are still remaining like the question the question is which part in which part the sperm or spermatozoa after the production suppose this is a spermatozoa it is being produced here after its production in the tubule where it will store temporarily yes this is the answer you have to mention here in the epidermis the the question is epidermis in the epidermis the sperm stores temporarily eventually another question comes in the neat exam where the sperm stores permanently the answer is seminal vesicle so when i'm telling about the sperm storage sperm storage two question to answer one is temporarily okay the answer will be apd time is another question is permanent obviously its answer will be uh you know its answer will be vas sorry seminal vesicle all right so question change answer change next question from the epidermis is uh it's a very very interesting question as a very common question if you talk about the structure of the sperm in the structure of the sperm there is a channel which is very much uh, iron is very much needed okay that we will also read in the mineral nutrition chapter that which iron entry is required in the sperm so that it still works and that's your calcium because calcium has the property that it will help in the dimerization of protein it's called tubulin protein and if that protein dimerizes then only it's possible that it is it is swing okay it is um, and it is moving so you need calcium so the question is calcium entry in the sperm is possible through a channel that's called caspar channel in which structure of in which structure of male reproductive system the calcium channel opens in the testis or in the epididymis do you think in the seminiferous tubule the calcium channel will open for the spermatozoa the answer is no so the calcium channel so so the calcium channel that i have already mentioned the calcium channel that cal that calcium channel which is present in the spermatozoa this is called caspar channel this caspar calcium channel becomes active not in the testis in the ap d dimis only so in the epididymis the calcium channel opens this is something you have to remember and after that only the sperm the spermatozoa becomes actually good motility it it gets good motility once the calcium channel opens okay okay so uh, this is something we have done today and here just i want to uh, show you that this uh, some uh, this questions like 
what is the difference between vasa efferentia and vasa differentia don't get confused you just show this you just see this picture and tell me what is vasa efferentia and what is vasa differentia the difference is very 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 easy this is your this is this is a reticulum testis that's i have already told the networking portions from that networking portions you you know that this is uh, something which is you are getting it's called uh, vasa efferentia and then you are forming apd timis and finally and finally you are forming this is the vasa differentia finally you know this is the this is a, tell me this is vasa differentia so this is the vasa differentia and this is the vasa efferentia who is in between who is in between tell me who is in between apd time is so don't get confused and what is reti testis this is a reti testis okay and this is a very popular question in the neat exam the teacher will ask you that tell every part every part of uh seminiferous tubule one after another that means there will be many options the first is coil test is straight test is uh, coiled uh, uh, sorry coiled seminiferous tubule straight seminiferous tubule uh, uh reti test is then efferentia epididyme is differentia or there will be multiple wrong options so you have to pick up the correct sequence of the journey of seminiferous tubule are you getting me okay so all right the next one uh, uh we have already just just last portion we will conclude after this uh that is uh, how the bladder and seminiferous tubule sorry how the bladder prostate and uh, seminal vesicles are present so if this is your bladder i'm drawing the bladder the front of the bladder is straight but the back of the bladder oh just hold on i need to change this. okay now this is fine the front of the this is the front of the bladder this is the back of the bladder okay if this is the back of the bladder i'm drawing this is the back of the bladder okay in this is the front of the bladder so this is your front okay this is your back of the bladder so you know already that some structure is coming from above to join here you already know that will open here tell me beta from kidney this structure is coming tell me what is its name tell me ureter ureter very good very good this is a ureter but now some structure will come from a uh, from scrotum testis epididymis that you already know what is it beta vas deferens yeah very good vas deferens okay all right now the vas deferens is coming and it is crossing like this you know and eventually it will again go down crossing it okay all right now it will become little bit swelled up little bit swelled up okay a little bit swelled up like this little swelling is there this is called ampulla of vas deferens this is called tell me beta this is called ampulla of vas deferens all right okay now this is the ampulla of the vas deferens if i say i need to say another part is called there is a structure which is a very uh Uh, compound uh, uh, acinar type of glands or secular type of gland because they you know as per shape the glands are divided into two either tubular or acinar or secular if you join them together this is uh, can you tell can you tell me this green color gland though another system is also present in the left side i am not drawing that i am only drawing the right side system if you, you you have enough time in your home you will draw the left side as well this is called sv seminal vesicle so the first questions from the seminal vesicle we have already covered one mcq from the seminal vesicle that is this is the house for permanent storage of sperm okay that is something we have already covered the next point that you have to remember from the seminiferous tubule it is homologous to the female uterus it is the homologous i mean what is uterus for lady that is seminal vesicle for male this is something you have to know and this is present anatomically at the back of urinary 
bladder, at the back of urinary bladder, not in front, that I have already given that concept. Fourth MCQ from the seminal vesicle is that this is the maximum contributor of semen. Maximum contributor of semen. I mean, whatever the semen is present in the semen, you have the cell that is called spermatozoa. Remaining is the fluid. And that fluid is mostly contributed by seminal vesicle. Though few amount of fluid is also contributed by testis as well. Few amount of the fluid is also contributed by the bulbo urethral gland as well. But maximally 60% contribution, 60% of the seminal semen volume is contributed by seminal vesicle. That's why the semen fluid is known as seminal plasma. That's why it is known as seminal plasma. It is known as seminal plasma because the maximum contribution is made by uh, seminal vesicle. And uh, the next question is, uh, it's a very, very important question. The secretion is a very much sticky. The secretion is a very much sticky because from the prostate, the secretion uh, uh, is more milky secretion, but for seminal vesicle, it's more sticky secretion. Okay. And another thing you have to remember that uh, whenever you will find this seminal vesicles and ample of the vase joining together, it becomes another duct. Can you tell me what this duct known as after the joining? So number fifth point, when you find uh, the ampulla of VD, ampulla of VD plus SV is joining together, it is known as something ejaculatory yes, yes. duct. It is the ED. And there are, same, there are same system, same formation process occur in the left side also. So how many EDs you have? You have how many EDs you have? You have two EDs, right ED, left ED. Both of the ED will open uh, separately. Both of the ED will open separately here. Both of the, uh, both of the ED will open uh, separately in the urethra. Both of the ED will open separately in the urethra, in the urethra. So this is the opening of the one ED. This is the, uh, this is the urethra, you know, no? you know, so this is the urethra. Okay, I'm, I'm drawing urethra in the blue, uh, in, in, in the yellow color. This is the urethra. Okay, if this is the urethra, if this is the urethra, so both of the ejaculatory ducts, they are opening in the urethra. Any doubt? Any doubt, they are opening separately. So they will open separately. Clear? Okay, all right for today. I think uh, you have understood. And I just want to tell you, though I have drawn this diagram and at the back of the bladder, though I have drawn mostly it's the back of the bladder, but I just want to say you, uh, for, your, for, for, your, for your quick understanding and detailed clarification, just see this one, what I have drawn, what I have drawn that, yeah. It is present on the back of the bladder, but if I say where the ED is present, back of the bladder or back of the prostate, that's something I have to tell you. Tell me, ED is present on the back of the bladder or back of the prostate? Back of the prostate. Back of the prostate. So if I tell you where the ED will open, suppose the ED is carrying sperm, suppose the ED is carrying sperm and semen, where the ED will open inside the bladder, do you think urine will be mixed up with the semen? Obviously, no. So ED will not open in the bladder. ED will open in the prosthetic urethra. In the prosthetic urethra, ED will open. So I think now it's, this concept is clear. In the next class, in the next class, we'll start from uh, a male reproductive system. We have mostly covered, almost covered. Only one part in the next class we will cover from the male reproductive system, and that is, uh, okay. Okay, just hold on. Yeah. Okay, and the next, uh, and and that's mostly, and and that's mostly on the next class we will talk about the semen. Okay, on the semen because there are many potential MCQ on the semen. 
after that we will straight away jump into the discussion of female reproductive system okay all right so uh, i think we have done most of the discussions if you have any confusion you can tell otherwise i'll leave this session you can also ask your doubts in your personal mentorship group and um, okay this is the, the starting of your syllabus so keep uh, always like uh, focused with your preparations and uh, do solve mcqs don't take multiple books to solve mcqs take one to two books and solve it multiple times okay that will work more and that will give a better syllabus coverage so all right bye bye take care lots of love lots of blessings see you on the other side on the next day